Revelations chapter 1 verse 7. I'm going to be responding to a recent call out against Donnie Reagan and there's five individuals who have personally responded back and negative, negatively but all honesty lacking truth and I'm going to expose the spirit that's in your you five men's lives and this will go forth to speak to the body of Jesus Christ in this hour Brad Taylor John Maraca Harrington Belita Rodos William and Vernon Philander well, I'm going to read a scripture first. I had put this thing together and then the Lord brought this scripture to be read first and what he wants me to do first before I go into this. Revelations, because I never saw this scripture until last night. Ever. In this light. So I told the Lord, I am going to minister to you, Lord. It's not, I'm not looking to the left or to the right. To the, to the rejectors, and even to the ones who are saying, man, at this moment, I have to keep myself even keel to minister to him. As I minister to him, then those that they know, who, who rejoice in the truth will hear clearly what God is saying. While judgment will strike the rest of you all who reject what God is saying in this hour. Revelations 1 verse 7. Behold. Behold means to look up. Okay? He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. So the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Word, amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, who, who, who since the beginning of time, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. All through the ages, from the beginning of time, when God began to give the revelation, as it started with Abel, that it would be a blood sacrifice, amen, that it was, the, it was the intermingling of blood through a sex act that would take the blood of Christ to redeem us back to God, amen? So it's always been about that, 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 that word that Satan has always been coming against and attacking since the Garden of Eden, amen? So you got the serpent seed who then show who this to Satan comes through the serpent to interject a seed that is a religious seed. Oh, they can quote quotes. Oh, they'll go on hunting trips, right, Brad? They'll do different things, amen. But when the spirit of truth comes forth and the spirit of Christ begins to show up in a man's life, they don't know what to do with it. They begin to squirm around their seats. They get caught up in their emotions and their filial love and their different things. And they cannot seem to hear what God is saying in this hour. Amen. So God quickens a scripture to me last night. Hits me deep. And I'm almost so deep that I thought, man, I want to preach a whole message on what, it, what do the clouds really represent. Because we as humans, speakingly, uh, since a child, that one day we're going to look at, we're, we're, going to, we're just going to see Jesus in the clouds, right? We're looking for a visual thing when it's the secret going away of the church to be caught up with the Lord in the air, right? So, but, but naturally, in the sense of the natural sense, we have, we have this perception of what we think and how, how the Lord works. And, and, and since a child, it's kind of how my mind ran, right? Until God broke this to me the other night with giving me the scripture and then then literally quicken it to me read this first and show them what i revealed and what i did over your village in 2007 brad taylor john maraca harrington batita rodas william vernon philander and the rest of y'all and i'm gonna tell you something do me a favor since you all got your feelings hurt send this to donnie reagan send it to him Send it to Tim Pruitt. Send it to, to Ronnie Spencer. Send it to all of them. Do it. Do it in this hour. Because they, they, won't, they won't listen. Because they're a rebellious house, amen, as God has revealed. And as this ministry, because many of you men who run your mouths, you don't, you're too scared, Brad Taylor. You're too much of a coward to come to see what God is saying through this ministry by the word, brother. I spent time with you. I broke bread with you. I went hunting with you. I've done different things, a part of your group. But since the time as a young man, 18 years old, basically a boy, and you in your, in your early 30s, 
God gave me discernment on your life then and the spirit hasn't changed in your life. You're a carnal Christian, Brad. You're more focused on your flesh and your emotions and the outward things and that competitive spirit of the flesh, brother. You haven't changed your ways. You're more focused on human, on filial love instead of agape love that this ministry was sent to expose in this hour. So what does the Lord say in Revelations 1.7? I'm going to read it one more time, then I'm going to show you something. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and every and they also which pierced him. You pierced him. You, you, you message of the hour believers. You think you're following Christ, amen? You are the very ones that are piercing him. You're crucifying Christ afresh by rejecting the word of the Lord and the fine line where Satan has worked in your lives, amen? And it's under judgment in this hour, thus saith the Lord, amen. You have pierced my Christ, amen. You have pierced his word, amen. I have walked amongst all of you, all of these churches throughout the, throughout the decades, amen. And God has continued to give me revelation, revelation and insight to all of your lives, amen. But kept me quiet, kept me quiet till this time in this hour in 2020, he raised this ministry up to roar like a lion for God in this hour, amen. You have pierced him, amen. And that, and because of that, you shall wail because of it, amen. Thus saith the Lord, amen. So in 2007, I met my mom, mom and dad's house. Brad, you know my parents. You, you've met, you spent time around my dad. He used to take me to church there every, every Sunday as a young boy in high school. Uh-huh. This high school football player star that you, you caught ear of. You're so carnal, caught up in your flesh way back then at deer camp. Oh, I got to challenge the young, the guy that had, I hadn't lifted weights probably in four months. You, the 32, 34 year old grown man, that's manpower. And you barely beat a young high school kid in arm wrestling. You were so caught up in your flesh. Then you guys want to play me and pick up football. And I smoked you all as a young man. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, I just got the Holy Ghost. I, I took all my football stuff, Brad, and burned every bit of it. All my, all, all my records and all the things and all the accomplishments and all the, all the stuff that I, that I kept, kept track of for that year, burned it all to know Christ. And then after I did that and laid all the past behind me, then I met the I am that I am and got the Holy Ghost, Brad Taylor. Get right with God in this hour, brother. You're, you're, not, you're not coming against me. You're coming against the authority of this ministry that God has raised up in this hour, brother. So in 2007, as God is leading this journey along in my life, I'm, staying, I'm at my mom and dad's house, and all of a sudden, they say, look up. My, my brother-in-law notices, look in the clouds. Look in the clouds coming in the clouds the Lord is a man of war to cry out against it in this hour you better get right so we looked up in the clouds and it caught all of our attention this, this supernatural cloud that God put above the house of my mom and dad as I'm standing there as a young boy, eight years old, God gave me a vision sitting next to my mother. As I'm sitting on the house, they live out in the country. As I'm facing, as I'm facing towards where they're going to be later on at this house, I see a vision. There's symbols in the vision. I don't understand the vision fully, but then I watch this vision unfold over the series of my life. A part of the vision is the moment the cloud shows up above me in 2007. But God waits till 2020, 13 years later, to finally reveal to me personally the cloud, what it represents at your ministry, Paul. What I have called and raised you up to do as a lion roaring, Revelations 10, verse 1, 2, and 3, around those scriptures. As a lion roaring in the jungle, it's on this channel. There's a message on my channel, you five cowardly men. So it's titled, What God Showed Me in 2020, I'm Now Commanded to Go Public About. And I explain it all there, so I'm not going to go any more depths of that. Other than this, this cloud appears above me in 07. 
with the super with the with the pit with the rainbow as re re mentioned in Revelation chapter 10 and the angel the mighty angel talked about that's re represented then of course I'm not going to take the time but if any of these we got any any spiritual discernment can see the face of the lion right there the same the, the lion face look at the bottom of the lion face right here see it and it appears right there Right there with the nose going right in the eye, the rainbow running right through the eyes, the nose above it, and the mouth. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And he's here. And it has confounded the whole message of the hour. It has confounded the church, and she's running, she's running scared. Because she, there's an authority at God has placed on this ministry to come after all of you in the name of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ to repent and come in line with God in this hour. Amen. Now, so you asked me, I, to this, I, put the, I put the thing on, it's on my YouTube channel. I screenshot the same post that I put. It's on the channel. Go to the, go to the, the community section. You'll see it. The same thing I said there, I put on this YouTube channel against Donnie Reagan and his life, his ministry. I've been to Donnie Reagan's church. Yep, went there in 1995 to visit it. Okay? Now... So you ask questions. Why don't you? Why don't, what's the Bible say when a brother sins against you? Go, go against him. This isn't a this isn't a brother versus a brother thing. This is his sin against the word of the Lord. This is his this is his failure because I have personally emailed him and three hundred a total of three hundred and fifty message of the hour pastors last year, calling him to repentance. All you men, I have also tried to contact his church before through the Facebook, and they won't even respond to me, folks. That's the attitude and the moment of this time. As the dream revealed to me from the Lord last year, I saw the pastors, and they all were saying, Oh, Brother Paul, just leave us alone. We like our little denominational system we got on our church. Don't quit trying to come on us and tell us to repent. Amen. So God always sends a prophet at, at, at the church. See, all you men, you all, you, all, you all weren't given this authority in this hour. You weren't called to this office to deal with these things for the Lord. Amen? To cry out against it for the voice of God in, in this hour. That your prophet, that you say you follow, you don't even hear the voice of God through his message. Amen? You, the very thing he cried out against, Satan has slipped in in this message, and you're a part of it, folks. Thus saith the Lord, amen. And he prophesied of a ministry that would rise up after him, and it's happening before your eyes in this hour, amen. But you won't take the time to look at the ministry, to see the prophecies, the, the, the very, the, this earth, the judgments that are going on around this whole earth, it was first spoken by a prophet in 2022, what was coming. And how I saw it. I saw it in the spirit, how I was commanded to speak, thus saith the Lord, in, in, in connection to his word. And we talk about Ezekiel 9. Only those who are sighing and crying for the sins of the city and aren't worried about how many, how, can I beat the guy in arm wrestling? But sighing and crying for the condition of this age and the condition of the church, amen. Those are the ones that are sealed with the seal of God in their foreheads to escape the judgments of God that are upon the land. You all making me work overtime. You old, you old house, stubborn house of Israel, huh? Dathan and Korahs, uh huh? Janus and Jamruses. Now I'm going to read scriptures. So, to answer your question there. It has been direct. It has been emailed. Just as I've emailed, how many times I've tried to contact Joseph Branham, Tim Pruitt. Huh? I the other day sent a message to Ronnie Spencer's church, and another church, message church. None of them respond. None of them. So you all, you all little, you all little, you all men, and I got a message coming, a prophecy against the spirit of Jezebel, and it's right for you men. Because that's what's on your lives. Oh, the depths of Satan. As I wrote here, you were not called, and I'm going to read scriptures and finish this up. 
Oh, I want to I bring this out to you publicly. Those, if you have the Holy Ghost, let me tell you a story. This church in my town that God had me start calling out heavy in 2020 was one time called the Word of Faith. So they at least used the word word, right? But there was a moment in time that they changed the name of their church to move, continue to move their agenda. Whatever this agenda they were feeling, that that leadership felt, that what it was is, we're, it, it is we are about building communities and opening more churches. I call them fast food churches. They're, they're like McDonald's chains, giving you, giving you false doctrine, giving you, giving you false dogmas and creeds and doctrines of devils, and people are not even getting saved in those churches, folks. So they change it to community of faith. Donnie Reagan, you'll have, oh, of course, you, you know, you won't respond to this ministry. None of you do. I've called out Jeff Jenkins. I've come against those who try to speak against William Branham's ministry in the right, wrong vein. Every one of you, you can't stand before this office. You can't stand before this anointing. And I preach the message called The Secret to show you the mind of God that when you don't repent, you start bringing judgment on your states, on your cities, on those things around you, till finally, as in the days of Moses, it comes right for your household, amen? Thus saith the Lord, amen? Quit playing with God in this hour, amen? So you were called Happy Valley Church of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You dropped Jesus Christ out of your church name. To call yourself now the Word of Life Church. I've been examining all your ministries before the Lord because I have been put as a seer over all of you, a judge before the Lord in this hour. I study your ministries. If I, I watch a Pentecostal churches, how, the, how things flow, and then I come into the guys like Ronnie Spencer and Tim Pruitt and Donnie Reagan, you can't even tell the difference. But the, you know what? There is, there is one difference that actually puts, that's taking you, oh Lord, that's taking you back. It's the adultery. That's the adultery of your ministries and your ways before Christ. Amen. I'm going to read two verses and I'm going to show you two dreams the Lord just gave me. Of, of Pat, me and a dream, two of them connected with pastors. Two of them. And one this morning. After being attacked last night, and the one this morning that he gave me. Galatians 1.10, for, for do I now persuade men? Huh? Huh? Or do I seek to please men? Come on. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. That's the problem with you, man. You're, the thing is, you ain't crossed the Jordan River yet. You're religious. Oh, you like feeling religious. It makes you feel good. You're more dedicated to church than 9 out of 10 people that walk on the earth. Uh-huh. You're religious, folks. I, religion is a covering and it sends your soul to hell, amen. You got to know Christ to know Him as life. Galatians 5, 7. You did run well, Donnie Reagan. Tim Pruitt, Ronnie Spencer, just as the dream showed me, God has has me raised above all of you. And that's right, Brad Taylor. You call it all. You seem like you're so much better than everybody else. I am a chief of sinners. This, 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 the stone that everybody rejected, you all wanted nothing to do with me when God had that anointing was on my life. Every time I've been around all your churches and your preachers, you were scared of this ministry. You rejected me my whole life. Wanted nothing to do with this ministry. God has made it the chief cornerstone in this hour. God has put it above you all in this hour to speak right at you, amen. To get yourself in line, amen. There's little time left. Repent or perish in this hour, amen. Your soul is laying the balance before God and found wanting, Donnie Reagan. So, do you think for a second you're going to walk in Brother Branham's church in his time? Huh? You think you're going to walk around my life? You think you're going to spend time around me and wearing a pink shirt and call yourself a man? No, sir. I coached, let me tell you, I coached my daughter softball when she was a young girl, okay? 
And there was talks of conversation that they might try to make our team wear pink, and I made a stand. I said, there is no way in the world I will, I will walk away. I will not coach. You will not put a pink shirt on me. But it's almost symbolic now that I look back as I was thinking about it. They gave me the color orange. And those of you who follow this ministry understand the calling of God on my life is orange represents judgment. Amen. A ministry raised up from my mother's womb to judge these things in this hour. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. You cowardly men. You've lost your backbone. You've lost your way. Amen. You've, you've lost your spine before God. That you start seeing, because the spirit of Jezebel is all over you, men. It's okay to wear pink. It's okay to wear pink. And then I knew when Don, I knew something was way off in Donnie Reagan's ministry in 2020. Your prophet that you say you follow, Brother Branham, right? Huh? William Branham, your prophet. Talked about plagues that were coming. Plagues and judgments, right? He said how men and what people will do when these plagues start falling upon the land is people will start dis using disinfectant. They'll start try trying to put on masks. They'll try trying to do all kinds of things. And none of those things are sent to protect you. None of it. He talks about you have to have the Holy Ghost. Your protection is in Christ, amen? That's what he talked about, folks. But where was that message at in Donnie Reagan's ministry? Instead, you saw people wearing masks in church. And I listened to him talk about, and he was starting to soften under the beast system. Weakening, weakening in his ministry to start embracing that, that, that thought pattern, that theology. Then you look at his ministry, you look at his church, changing in the name as I just showed you. It's got it's it's his sanctuary and his remodeling and and, 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 and the money and, and the money that pulls pours in to these pastors' lives, amen. And that's why they preach so hard to make sure you get yourself in church on Sunday. Because come on now, we gotta support you gotta support this work that's going on here, folks. Oh Lord. Now so the dreams. Here's the problem. None of us are perfect, my brothers and sisters. But here's the failure of you pastors as the first dream showed. When people are in your camp, oh, you love them. Oh, you're there for them, right? But when they have a little issue with your ministry and they want to start maybe trying to get you to, to repent, or to change your ways. Or they say, these people stop going to your church. You have nothing to do with them. You forget them. You, you just, you don't, you don't care. You don't reach out to them anymore. They don't matter to you anymore. You have, they, they, you have no use for them. They have no use for you. That's how you look at it. And they're, they become scattered sheep. Uh-huh. So I look at my own life and my own ministry. I've had people that have come and gone, and we, we've come into each other's lives, but there's always, and they know what I'm talking about. They stay on my heart. Dwayne Wipert. I had to go search for him again, and God reconnected us, folks. Did he search for me? No, but I'm supposed to search for him. And he's a part of some dead, worldly church, and I'm trying to pull him out of it. Amen. Those who've connected to my ministry, maybe times we didn't talk, but here I was again emailing you just so you know, I love you. I'm thinking of you in this hour, amen. Where are you at, pastors? You dividers and conquerors of the body of Christ, you spirit of Nicolaitanism, and it's all over your life, amen. You're under judgment. The humbling is coming. The humbling has already been striking the earth already. Many of you are already being, being humbled and dealt with. So we got to change the name of our church. You can't hide from the wrath of God, Donnie Reagan. The judgment of God against these false teachings, against these false, the subtleness of Satan that slips into your ministries, amen? You, you, study the, you study the men wearing their pink shirts. It shows you the condition of that church, amen? The second dream. Now here's, here's what the dream this morning revealed. 
And why you all, why God raised me up. I'm in a car with two pastors in the dream. I'm sitting in the middle of the two. They're telling me, listen, Paul, we're, we're going on a mission right now, as many of you pastors do. You're very missionary minded, right? You all, you all, you all, you all, you know, you, you go travel to other countries. Many of you pastors do that. That's a big part of what you do. You go travel to countries. You're trying to get little churches started. You do your little work, right? As the dream revealed. And every, and, and you're telling me, the, your pastors are telling me, you, got, you all got a good starting point, okay? As the dream revealed. And you're telling me we got to get water. Water was represents the word. We got to get the water of the word to this to get this building up and going here. We got to get the water. And in the dream, it's pipes, it's plumbing pipes, as I'm seeing in the dream. And the two pastors, and, the, and I said, and I'm asking questions. Okay, so where do we get our water source from? So they say this is how we do it. So they take me down to the creek, and they're taking the pipe, and they're getting the water, and they put the pipe in the water, and all of a sudden it starts the water flow, right? And we're and they're just taking pipes to get to about 100 meters distance to get that water to this building which represents a church. Amen? But then all of a sudden in the dream, you all start using the wrong pipe. You get off the word. And I'm standing there in the dream looking at the pastors. The pipe is wrong. You're using the wrong pipe. I see the pipe. I see there's a, there's a gap where the water can't, can't continue to flow to reach that pipe to continue the flow of the word of the Lord. Amen? But in the dream, you both just look at me like, like you're dumb, like you're ignorant, like you're foolish. Like, well, I don't know what to do. I, I'm not going to do nothing about it. I'm not going to heed the warning of God. When you know what to do, folks, you started out off right. What is it about? It's getting back to the first church, amen? This message is a far cry from the book of Acts, amen? From the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter and what the first church laid down, folks. Amen, it's a far cry from it, amen, this hour. But you settled in because you got a few pipes going, right? You got a few pipes going. Oh, here it comes. There were seven pipes. And you stopped. We got Brother Branham's ministry. We just click play. We, we, we see, we, we can look back 60 years ago, but we don't recognize what God is doing in this hour. That you are off the word. You're using the wrong pipe. You weren't called to do it, folks. This ministry was raised up to do it for the Lord in this hour, amen? To straighten these things up. You're off the word, Donnie Reagan. You're off the word, Tim Pruitt. You're off the word, Ronnie Spencer. All of you message pastors in this hour, amen. Get back in line with God or repent. The judgment's coming for thy household, amen. And you little bride of Christ, who been God has been calling you out of these things and you've been contacting me, I'm sent to feed you and comfort you, to love you, Love's corrective. Love is corrective. Come on, folks. People who know my heart, I'll come right at you. But then, man, I tell you what, time goes by, you're on my heart all the time. I mean, I can't stop thinking about you. I love you. I love Chris Slush and, and, and any. I love that brother. Amen. I do. I love you, Brad Taylor. But the line is roaring. There's an anointing coming against a spirit on your life in this moment. And the rest of you men. 1 Corinthians 3.21. And you know what the funny thing is? None of you men can, you know, you can, you can sometimes take a, you can try to quote a scripture and not even have it in context. That's why I, just, I told the men today, I commented on the, they kept, it was the public post on Facebook, they kept commenting. I said, I'm done with words. You're going to hear the voice. I'll put something together and I'll be sending it to all of you. 1 Corinthians 3.21 Therefore let no man glory in men. You're glorying in a man. You're glorying Donnie Reagan. You're looking back to a time when he started building the pipes, as many of them did, but they, they died. They spiritually have died. There's death in the camp, folks. There's death in the pot. And God raised up the double portion of the spirit of Elijah to cry out against it this hour, amen? Repent. 
The judgments are coming from God in this hour. They will continue to fall in this hour, amen. There's death in the pot. And only the word of the Lord can get it out. You denominated. Oh, Lord. Your presence is here. Yes, Lord. He said, you tell them it's coming. Thus saith the Lord. Not I that speak but the Lord in this hour. What is love? 1 Corinthians 13, 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. In the truth. While you rejoice in, your, in, in things that are not lining up with the truth. Dovetailing the scriptures completely together. Isolating a scripture or isolating a, or taking a quote and no understanding to run it together, to, to take it back to the absolute that Brother Random said that I had to put together a quote book in 1998 called The Forgotten Quotes of the Message of the Hour. Quote, quote, quote. I mean, just hundreds and hundreds of quotes that the Bible is the absolute. Your King James Bible. But you'll take a quote and twist it to fit your, your Jezebel spirit on you men. We, you weak men this hour. You are a far cry from the men who got their head chopped off for the gospel, amen? Shame on you, men! Repent! 1 Timothy 5.20 Them that sin rebuke before all. Huh? Come on, John Mar Maraca. Come on. You've said the most. Them that sin rebuke before all, amen? That others also may fear. Proverbs 27, 5. Open rebuke. Open rebuke is better than secret love. It's that secret false filial love that won't come and tell the truth. But the thing is, these pastors, they all know about me. Because God's been sending me out, sending me at them for years now. And they just keep ignoring it and rejecting it. So God has to go public against it. For the sake, my ministry, ultimately, it's to speak the judgment of God, but it's to get his people. It's to lead his people to Christ in this hour, amen? To comfort those that I am sent to love. So how did Jesus Christ deal with the leaders of the church? There, Brad, huh? Come on, come on, John, Harrington, Rodus, Vernon, and the rest of y'all. Huh? Come on. What did John the Baptist do? He laid the axe to the root, didn't he? What did Jeremiah do? God sent him right at the house of Israel. What did Ezekiel, do? Ezekiel and Amos and all the prophets do? Come right at it, folks. So that is the spirit of Jesus Christ. You say you, you, try, to, you try to use this, this fake filial love. When God, the agape love only stays with the word, amen. And when the, when, the, when, when the bride, the true elect of God is lined with the word, then there is a brotherly pure love and a sister love that is so, oh, it's a book of Acts written again. You don't got it amongst you. You don't. I guarantee you all have super, y'all. I guarantee Brad Taylor will be sitting in a Super Bowl gathering probably this Sunday. Probably will. Somewhere, some way. Uh-huh. Supporting that agenda, right? But can't even quote a Bible verse when he's trying to send me his... His message. You better get it right, man. God has sent me right at you. That's his voice in this hour. John 8, 44. What did Jesus do when dealing with the, the, the church of that time? We'll call it the church of that day, right? Right? Oh, the Brother Branham said himself. You like to quote Brother Branham, right? Brother Branham say, he said the Pharisees and Sadducees by the fruits of the Spirit, could run circles around Jesus the way, they, the way they did all their little deeds and all their little outward appearances and, oh, we just love, oh, we just love Brother Donnie. Oh, we just love Brother Tim. All that carnality stuff of the flesh, of the human emotions that God is not with, folks. You are of your father, the devil. Yeah. Supporting the beast system agenda. When God at the same time had me go public and preach a message on my channel, the first message that got more views than anything I had preached at that time in 2020, the mask agenda and the spirit behind it to show you the mind of God and what's going on while Donnie Reagan's going the other way. Showdown, I told you. 
One man against it all. Elijah against the Baal prophets, folks. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, so that's what you keep doing. You men, you, you spirit of Jezebel men, are think you're doing God a service, but you're actually murdering, you're piercing. Revelations 1-7, you're piercing Christ, amen. You're piercing the word in the salary, man. To not hear what God is saying in the salary, man. This is the hour of judgment. It's all across the land because of the church and the leaders of men, amen, that won't repent. And abode not. And abode not. You won't abode. Oh, you'll quote scriptures. Remember, remember what, did, what did Satan do to Jesus? He quoted the word. But they won't abode. You won't abode. You won't stay. You won't make this your absolute. You don't even, John Miranda, you don't even know what the Holy Spirit looks like because you ain't got the Holy Spirit yet. You ain't met him. You got another spirit working your life. Oh, the depths of Satan. Oh, the spirit of Jezebel all over the land, all over the globe, amen. Influencing all these pastors in this hour, amen. Because there's no truth in him. For when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Matthew 23, 33. You serpents. Jesus, when he dealt with the, with the leaders of men, and you all got your little feelings hurt, because I said men should be wearing pink in the church and embracing uh, these, these different uh, uh, beast system agendas. Uh-huh. Come on, folks. And they won't, they won't heed the voice of God. They're off the word. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indictment against them in their lives. Amen. Because if they were worth the word, they would recognize what God is saying in this hour. Amen. But they don't. They stop at the pipes. They're using the wrong pipe. The, water's, the word's not getting to the people. Amen. But the, the Bible prophesied this hour would come. A famine. Not for food, but for the word of truth. And then God graciously leads his little people to this ministry, his, his, his precious little bride that's one-on-one -on -one loving him and seeking him. Amen. You generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Huh? Death and hell follow with the fourth horse rider, the pale horse rider. How can you escape? So I wrote here as I was putting this together. So listen me as God's voice in this hour. The depths of Satan as he works on the razor sharp edge to add one word, to put a period and say this is where we stop. We, don't, we stop right here as we're, as we're running our pipes. We're done here. And the look on their face is like, what else, what else do I do? I don't want to listen. I don't care what you got to say. We're going to stop right here. And the war's not getting to the people, amen. What you think it is? Because they're anointed. Oh, they preach so anointed. When Brother Bam talked about it in the message, anointed once at the end time, amen. It's the word. It's the word. It's the word. And when men are walking into your church wearing pink, that's a ministry under judgment. Thus saith the Lord, a man is off the word. And the whole thing about Tim Pruitt, this is the amazing thing about this. When I began to see things, watching his ministry and analyzing it, as the Lord was leading me to it, at the time he was using not even a King James Bible version, a different version, as a scripture reading in the PayPal account at one time on their YouTube channel, and the whole posse of preachers, and you start to see, then finally God gives you the dream. And tells you, go, go, preach, prophesy against the man's ministry to repent. I never stepped foot in the man's church one time. I never personally had met Tim Pru. I did what God told me to do, and I sent it right to him personally to see how he would respond. Will he come back and respond? Will he reach back out? Will, he, will, will, will we be able to talk through this and there be a repentance and coming to see what God is saying? No. So he raises up his little... He has his little, his, little, his little posse boy, Danny Steeman, who then brought judgment on his state. And Danny Steeman is fulfilling the very thing that he tried to come against this ministry with as calling this Satan's, uh, Satan's minister. It's been prophesied. He has It's his now. And he's been preaching since. And then, this last year, 
Danny Seaman holding a meeting in Michigan at Paul LaFontaine's church. A message believer who, who knows my ministry doesn't know who he is, but has been following this ministry and feels led to go to a Michigan meeting. He's feeling the Spirit of God all the way. He said, man, I'm having the most amazing experience, Paul, on the way to the meeting. He said, but I walk in the meeting. He said, man, I, I'm so much in the Spirit of God. He said, something is off in this church. The man preaching, there's no Spirit of God in this man's life. But the people, are, some of the people, that, especially the preachers, are all patting each other on the back. Oh, yeah, come on, Red Brother, preach, blah, 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 blah. And he says, Paul, I'm so troubled. I did not, did not feel the Spirit of God in this man's life. Calls me on the way home. I said, well, who's, who's, what's the guy? Where's the guy? Where's, he's some traveling preacher from Florida. And I said, oh, Florida. Is it name, name Danny Steeman? He said, yeah, that's him. God vindicated this man's ministry. I have spoken as his prophet in this hour. So keep coming against it, men. You'll bring judgment on your life. Thus saith the Lord in this hour. So Tim Pruitt's ministry. I got, then sent the message. Then God gave another dream in January. Telling the man to repent. Then God gave the dream shown because he won't. That judgment, how God's judgment mind works, folks. Catch the mind of God. God didn't strike his church or himself at the initial judgment stage. Because this judgment, God's judgment comes in stages, folks. Remember that, days of Egypt. Pharaoh, right? It came in stages, so finally it came right at Pharaoh's house. And then the dream showed a major city in his state would be struck with judgment because of his lack of repentance. And on March 23rd, you can go look it up yourself. The number 23 represents death and judgment, folks. That to major tornado struck New Orleans with the dream revealed. And there was, a, there was a life lost in that major judgment. And the headline said, like the Ukraine war has, has struck this area. Then, as of this recent end of this year, a family who's looking for a place, a message believers, steps foot in his church, Tim Pruitt's. They both, they, they don't know, they don't, they don't even know who I am. And they are sensing something is off. So then they go do their own research and they find the message that God had me speak against him and call it out publicly. God keeps bringing vindication on my life in this hour. Just, I am sent to the God's elect and that's it. To speak to her life, amen. To comfort her in this hour. Him and her, the body of Jesus Christ. Vindication, of what? and then, and then we had some, some fellowship, and some dialogue, and we did a message to help to bless them and, and, and to speak to their lives a couple weeks ago or so. Satan who has slipped into the message and these pastors are off the word. Thus saith the Lord. Oh, you say, come on, Paul. One little error here. One little issue there. It don't matter. Then they bring up, the one guy brings up, well, Brother Branham wore shorts one time. I don't care what Brother Branham did. I don't care what, bro what decision Brother Branham made. Brother Branham is not my absolute. That's the difference, message. That's why you get off the word because you're not staying with Christ already, man. As Brother Branham said that you're supposed to do, message. But you don't listen. You don't listen. The same lie Eve told. You are eating it. You are eating, you are, all of you men, I just mentioned your name and the rest of you all who carry the spirit, you're eating the same lie with Eve, you're eating it with her. And the water's not getting to you. You're satisfied with your seven pipes. So we got to, we just, we understand this concept of the seven age messengers. We understand, but we don't catch what the message kept saying of all the prophecies and speaking forward, what God was going to raise up a final prophet. Brother man, go, go get your church age book, body of Christ. Right at the very end of the age. But they take it because they are so wrapped up and dead spiritually and denominated around a concept around, and not staying with the word as a pillar of fire. Does it stop moving, folks? God loves to confound you all. That's the wine of God. He's been doing it since the Garden of Eden. Think he's going to stop for you? You think God's going to change for you? Huh? Stubborn house of Israel? Jesus Christ is saying, oh, Lord. See it, Lord. Amen. He 
said, don't cry anymore. It's done. It's done. I will finish reading this quietly. Because the voice goes silent and the judgment falls. The warning is only, the warning goes out one last time. And it's been going out for, oh, God has had me warning and warning and warning, message after message. Then you try and use a quote or something of Brother Branham to defend your errors. Repent, but you won't. William Branham is not your absolute. But this King James Bible is. But you won't listen. Galatians 1.8 But though we are an angel preach any other gospel unto you then that which have we have preached unto you let him be accursed. If anything is being brought to you it's not staying with this word. That's not, 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 not putting forth what the first church had. This, this, this bloody gospel this foundation let him be accursed. A pastor can subtly be off just a little there and a little here as the spirit of Lady Osea and Jezebel creeps in to his own emotions and he begins to weaken down and slowly goes off the word. The sheep keep looking back at when he was used mightily for the Lord or when his ministry started off on the pure word past. So you 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 so you sheep are deceived emotionally. Emotional led sheep and your fleshly carnal minds will defend them to your own spiritual death. Foolish virgin, because you don't have the oil in your lamp. You're trying to build the pipe is being built the wrong way, and you don't see it. Minute 47, as I'm recording. I just talked about it on this last message and I just put out. God gave me the dream, 47, 47, 47. It kept speaking to me. I wake up. It was 40, it was the, the King James Bible. I'll go look it up. What's the meaning of 47 in the Bible? And it connects to the King James Bible. 47 men that were set aside to, to translate, create that version. And then God shows me that out of all the seven English translations, the scripture in Psalms where it talks about the, the word of the Lord is purified seven times like a furnace. God purified that English version through seven different processes to get to that seventh one. His, his authority, His absolute, His everything, His, his word, that King James Bible. But you're off the word and the pipe ain't working anymore. So God raised me up to come against it. You'll defend him, and literally in the process, you'll be rejecting the Holy Spirit. You'll be piercing him as he can. He comes in the clouds. He comes in the clouds as a warrior. A warrior for the Lord in this hour. Confusing your filial love for the Spirit of God. Your filial love, you think it's the Holy Spirit, Jezebel men, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. Which is not. The issue is this, that you don't have the Holy Ghost. None of you men have the Holy Ghost yet. You're religious. You feel God's Spirit Yet you have not allowed him to enter the soul and take full control of your very life so that you will be able to hear his voice. Last scripture. You want, and you want, do you want scripture on this? The showing how the human love, it gets, you get confused because you're, you're at this stage in your walk. You have not come to Christ. You've not went to Pentecost and took on the name of Christ yet. Uh-huh, you haven't took his name on yet. Because his name is his word, amen? It's written, it's his word, folks. 
Remember when Jesus said, I got to go to the cross because the word commanded it. But Peter, all you men, got your little, no, don't you talk about Donnie. Oh, I, don't you talk about my boy. It's my brotherhood. Oh, I love Donnie. He did, he come, he traveled to our, to our, to do his missionary work in our country. Uh-huh. Not giving you the complete word. He's not catching the mind of God. None of them pastors are catching the mind of God for this hour. They stopped. They have stopped and they have spiritually died there. And, and you know there's something missing. I spit years in your ranks message. Pastors, your churches, amen. I have seen it from one after another, after another, after another. But the hour is now. He comes in the clouds. And you're piercing him again. You've not allowed him to enter the soul and take full, take full control of your very life so that he, you will be able to hear his voice, as I just read. But what did Jesus do in Matthew 16, 23 when Peter was acting that way? He looked at Peter. <laughs> Don't you... Don't talk about Donnie, brother. Brad, Brad, don't talk. I can't, I can't stomach this. I can't be a part of your Facebook anymore and read these posts. You hurt my feelings. You hurt my emotions, uh-huh. Peter. Peter caught up in his feelings, his emotions. Peter says, you know what, Jesus, you ain't going to the cross. I, my life has went to the cross where you men have it. To stay with the word, but you won't. You've denominated around this very, the very pastors of this message, not the voice of God that speaks through the message. And that voice, you can't, you can't put a period on that voice. That, that voice, that voice has kept riding out and been raised up in this hour, confounding them all, baffling the whole body of Christ in this hour. Or the, the, the religious, the body of Christ is feeding upon, not baffling her. But baffling you leaders of men. And you men under that Nicolaitanism spirit and that Jezebel spirit. Amen. But I'll pray for you at the end of this message. Because what did Jesus say about Peter? I'll pray for you. For Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But after you're converted, strengthen your brethren. Jesus looked at Peter in that moment when Peter said, You're not going to go, you're not going to stay with the word, Jesus. Because he was caught in his emotions. Don't talk about Donnie. Don't say this. Oh, just, oh, but take a quote from Brother Branham. Twist it a little bit. Get, get all caught up in your emotions. You, you soft men. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Lord Jesus, the hour is late. The body of Jesus Christ in this hour. She's only going to come through one way to rapture out of here. It's through Gethsemane. Would Jesus Christ bear the cross alone and all the world go free? She will walk through Gethsemane. She'll walk one on one. Jesus Christ, the word hearing only his voice. Is it their own prophet, Brother Branham, as he told us, as, the, as God gave him that vision of what would be taken in the third, taking place in the third pole, I'll meet you in there. The, sin, the, hit, the hidden compartment of the soul, not a public show, God meeting one-on-one, -on -one, taking each one of his body of Christ, his bride, into the Garden of Gethsemane, amen? To suffer with him, Amen? To suffer in this hour. To stay with the word, amen. But you men are scared to go take on that cross. You're scared. So you, you, you hold on to something. You want, it's, it's in human nature, folks. You want to hold on to the flesh. But even Christ, the word made flesh, said you can't hold on to me right now, Peter. I got to go to the cross, amen. Get behind me, Satan, amen. Hallelujah! 
كلمه الشيل ما كثر الشيل ما حاله ما كثر الشيل ما حاله ما كثر الشيل هللويا اوه لورد هاب ميرسي فاذر My mind, my body is broken, Lord, under this ministry at times, Lord. The Spirit of the Lord moves up heavy upon my life. To yield, to yield to you, Lord, to do something, Lord, that no man would want it to do. But here I am, Lord, obedient to you, Father. I love you, Lord. I'm speaking to your elect and that alone. Hear God's voice, elect. He's with you. You carry your cross. You're walking through your own gardens alone. You're suffering the, 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 the rejection of the church, the world, the, everything around you. Because you're following Christ, the Word, amen. But all oh, resurrection morning awaits thee soon. And the secret going away of the bride of Jesus Christ. Because she loves Him. She stays with His Word. She follows His way. His truth, His life, because He is the way, the truth, and the life. She's, she's only Jesus Christ. She don't see no man. She don't see men. She don't glory in faces of men and personalities. She glories only in her beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word. She's in love with Him. He wrote her a love story one day. He wrote her a letter. Dear Bride, he started in the book of Genesis and wrote it all the way to Gentile Revelation. His love story, his word to his bride. This is who I am. Follow me. Love me. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. For he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. I pray for these men that I've mentioned. And any other man or woman under the sound of this voice, if there's any hope in your heart that you hear what God is saying, you will flee that spirit that's on your life and you will go to your garden alone with Him. And you'll wrestle with Him until you, you stay there till you're dead, till you die to yourself, amen. And you get filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. You stay with the Word, amen. You eat the book, amen. You gotta take the Word of God and apply it to your life, amen. Anchor your, Lord, anchor these men and women. Deal with them that they'll anchor their soul to one tie post. Jesus Christ, the Word. They'll meet you. Then they'll be able to hear. They'll recognize what God is saying in this hour. They'll hear the Spirit of truth crying out against it. Amen. Because they don't. They're denominated. They're spiritually blind, Lord. They don't see it. And if they don't wake up, judgment's coming by their door this hour. Amen. Lord, you are here. I feel you. Son, you have stood in the gap for me for over four years publicly. You, you, you took a beating. You stood for my word. And now I will stand next to thee. I will not let a word of thy mouth fall to the ground. For you have defended me in my word. Your hair, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you. Silence. Silence. There's no more to be said. The Lord has spoken.